how does it go in PD team? I've got an underappreciated and underutilized tool that I'm going to be showing you today. This one is quick. I was reminded of this tool by the subscriber that goes by the name of Sergio Motion. If you've not watched Allow User Data to Talk to Your Shader with Redshift in Cinema 4D, please watch that first. Link is in the description below. We'll be using that video as a jumping off point. This project is the perfect example of this use case. This tool allows our projects to be more modular. With that being said, let's dive in. Okay, so here's the example that we created last time where we placed our user data on our object itself and it's now talking to the shader. The problem with this is if I create another object like here, I would have to recreate the user data information on this object. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just copy the user data off onto the new object? Well, that's where this tag comes into play. This is the user data tag and you access it by right clicking on the object and going to programming tags and clicking user data. So you can see here's the menu and it's called user data. It's in the programming tab. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it. So you can see here, here's the tag and I've just changed the properties and you can see this tag allows us to move the properties to a new object or copy. So let's go ahead and build this out. Okay, so I've got a blank object here. I'm going to apply the user data tag to it and you can see the user data tag looks like the notes tag where we can add notes and details describing maybe how we use the user data. So if you have a complex rig, you can apply it and then put notes in here for the other users to use for animation purposes or whatever kind of tasks you need. So we're going to click user data, manage user data, and then we're going to add a group. And this group is called shader control. Hit enter. And then with shader control selected, we're going to add data to it. And this name is really important because it's going to need to correlate with your shader that we input in. So I'm going to call this one hue shift, hit enter. And we're going to do a float, float slider and do real. And we're going to set our value to 0 0.001 and our value will be negative one and positive one because that's how the values work. And then now that we've entered this value in, we can right click on this and say copy, paste, right click, paste. And we can then give this one a new name of lightness, enter. And this one here is sat for saturation. And there you go. And then hit OK when you're ready. And I'm going to go ahead and shift this to 0.5 so we can see the change. And now what we want to make sure is in our shader that our user data nodes are match. So I can select the tag here. And you can see this is hue shift that matches hue shift, saturation shift, and lightness lightness shift. These need to connect and be exactly the same as you put in here. So it works out and communicates. So I'm going to take my shader, add it on, and then I'm going to fire up the IPR. And you can see the tag is now communicating. So I can bring the lightness down and it darkens. And there we go. That's the user data tag. And there you go. So now if I add another object to the scene, I can quickly just make a copy so I can hold control or command and drag a tag and then drag the shader to it. And we can see that we'll now have a new property. So I'll just change this to 0.1 to 1 here. And you can see we have a different color. So we can now add this module ability to our objects without having them stuck on the object themselves like we have here. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.